Hey guys, my name is Simpsy. How you all doing? Welcome back to some more Medieval 2 Total War Definitive Edition here today on the channel. We have episode 10 of my Holy Roman Empire series. Here today, we're going to be con continuing to try and mop up the last of some of the Catholic and enemy factions they were at war against. So, if you like the sound of that, feel free to leave the video a like and subscribe if you're new. We've won a lot of battles against the Moors, and now we've taken out another Sultan, taking Algeria. Alrighty, back in Constantinople, after defending it in the last episode, we just need to reform the garrison there. We're still at war with the Hungarians, but looking at this Bran, Sophia, the garrisons aren't very big. We're really benefiting from the amount of effort and work we put down in the last couple of episodes because we've destroyed multiple stacks of Hungary which we played same with the Moors um, the Danes so and Poland to some extent so we're gonna take brand here and we're gonna continue to just gobble up some more settlements okay and then we just keep on going because they seem to have a territory to the north by the look of it as we can see so we'll try and keep the populace happy in Bran and we'll get some mercs and we'll continue to advance steamroll and blitzkrieg okay so we've got Orwinus von Kessel in Krakow we should be able to take their capital as the Poles seem to be sending an army a crusading army a matter of fact uh, down to Constantinople so another Polish settlement has bitten the dust all right, back up against the Danes in Aarhus. We're currently sieging them out. We managed to uh, destroy them in the last episode, taking uh, Hamburg back. But thankfully, there's no general in sight. And we're going to be able to take the capital as well. Mandorf as well. Dude, look at this. Look how crazy this guy is at 61. A new threat. Oh, here come the Mongols. Yeah, because we've still yet to deal with them, eh? Alright, Prince Conrad, the future emperor, continuing to run down further Hungarian territory. They've actually pushed into Ukraine and into Russia, which is super interesting. The Hungarians and Poles have taken territory over there, so we'll try and take that from them. But so far, the garrisons and armies haven't been really hard to deal with oh no Maximilian Mandorf after taking Aarhus as he's moving into Sweden has died of old age oh we've nearly lost that entire generation of those fantastic generals von Saxony uh, Mandorf von Kassel just to name a few but thankfully their line uh, is secure we've got a huge and strong Holy Roman Empire family tree at the moment, which is awesome. Alright, so, a couple of things we have to deal with here. We have to take Sofia. Doesn't have much of a large garrison. We have to push into Bulgaria and Romania, taking Bucharest. And we might even deal with that Polish army as well. A night attack would help. Yep, so we had number them 4 to 1. We're fine there. And then we're going to deal with this Polish army as well. Let's replenish and repair where we can. Alright, the Danes seem to have ha taken um, Sweden, so we're going to have to run them down there. Alright, let's move you up to just give us some help. Currently besieging out Thorn. The garrison has been built. Although he's a um, pretty decent general, Wenceslas, we just outnumber him too much there for him to make a decent play. And another Polish settlement has fallen. Here come the Mongols. Become comfortable with the enemy you know, our familiar foes. But to discount the menaces that lurk beyond the known world is to risk a rude awakening that can become a nightmare. This nightmare is the Mongol invasion. I wish I could see where they landed, because they can 
basically spawn either side of the Caspian Sea, or even further down towards Baghdad. As we're running down the Crusading Poles here, and we'll siege out Bucharest to hopefully take it. Just trying to mop up the last of the Catholic and Danish armies. They're so much on the back foot. They're incredibly split and thinned. It's just a matter of time. It's <laughs> just taking their settlements. We're besieging out Oslo and Stockholm in Sweden as well. A papal election? Oh, we've been reconciled. So this time we actually can vote, which is hilarious. Um, we're going to vote for our candidate, but it's going to get to a point where every single future pope, once we get rid of all the Catholic factions, will be Holy Roman Empire elected. But it does look like the Danes are probably going to get the vote. Because I don't reckon we're going to be able to bribe them, like because we're at war with them. Yeah, and the Danish Pope got it. So once we destroy the faction, that would be able to get rid of him. Alright, I sent an army down against the Moors as well with Emperor Henry. And, yeah, that's about 60-70% in our favour. So Henry is more than capable. Oh, okay, I was going to say that's why. It's just filled with artillery, <laughs> ballista. They're not going to really be able to do too much about that. And, yep, faction has been destroyed. The moops are no more. I thought they might have had some sub-Saharan African territory, but most of North Africa, or West North Africa, is under our control. Egypt still avails us. Um, back in Bucharest, we can surely take out King Vlad here and finish off the Hungarians in Romania. Which is a huge coup, coup for us, and the faction has been destroyed. Perfect. Alright, still done, running down the last of the Polish, who have fled to Vilnius. And or Winners von Kessel. Should be able to run things down. And then I think we'll make a border with the Russians. I don't really have too much of an ambition going into their lands. Just because it's so big. And the territories aren't really that worth it not really resource resource rich in this game and I kind of want to keep a bit of a buffer zone between us and the Mongols and potential tomb rids. so letting the Turks and Russians fight them would be ideal I want to look to move upon Halic and Vilnius now they've called another well they've constructed rather another crusade army just want to finish off the last of the pesky poles here. And then once I take Vilnius, I can't imagine what else they have left. We will get a battle in today's episode. I can promise you that. Just a matter of time when. We're just sort of steamrolling these last settlements. And none of these battles are really interested in me, to be honest. Oh, Poland's destroyed. Okay, so I've decided to swing around the army that was from Oslo in Norway. Just to help things out in Stockholm. We were a little bit sketchy here. With the generals. Oh, oh, there's only 63. King Harkin. Okay, that's enough. We had number him 13 to 1. I was like, we might need it. What did the Danes have? What? Oh, what? They've got Helsinki. <laughs> oh my god. I thought that would have been the last of them. We're going to have to sail all the way over there. That's annoying. Okay. Well, um, I'm just sort of trying to see where I want to set up... A defensive perimeter. I think I... I I could... Maybe set it up there in Nicaea. Hmm. I have to think about it. But here's the Empire as well, if you guys are curious. How big it is at this time period. We haven't needed to look at Germany and... For, um, and Britain for some time. So, I think... we got Like, I could have pushed further into... Turkish territory, but I think somewhere around here, like, look at these choke points, right? I think fort walling this all off is our best bet. Because there's a lot less mountains as we go eastward a bit. I think we blockade this, and we can reinforce it quicker from Constantinople and in Nicaea. 
All right, we still need to finish off the Venetians as well, which have fled to Crete and have built it up. We Can you guys remember, we fought them in episode one. They were the first main faction we fought against. We pieced out with them off and on. I think they might have attacked us here and there, but they sort of were really quite passive when they were thrown back to uh, Crete itself. Uh, unfortunately, the Danes have fled to Helsinki here, but running them down is the main goal. I might even give Finland to the Russians, because I'd rather not let them not take it by force. Okay, so we'll just beef up these forts, but I think, yeah, eventually if we can get five, six forts with full stacks, that would be brilliant. Because I think, like, if the settlement, the Turkish settlements were a little bit more defensible, a little bit more built, if there was, like, a bit of a better clustering, I might actually pull further eastward. Okay, things are moving along well. And we have to deal with um, the Venetians as well. Uh, although that balance of power is not the best. We just outnumber them, so we should be okay. I think we're better off taking him out because the Pope's just there. We've got a witch spawning, which is hilarious. Yeah, because he, he spawns as an army, doesn't he? Well, let's get rid of him. Uh, no, I don't want to adopt you, thank you. And then there is no Pope at present, so we have to wait until we get our own. But does that destroy the Papacy officially? I don't know. Well, that's the only candidate, <laughs> one of our own. We might need to go about and actually recruit a bunch of priests. So, they're going to be fully under our control. The only problem is, I still think the Pope can call a crusade, even if we don't choose to. But for all intents and purposes, we can control the papal see. A new Pope has been elected at the top of this turn. So this should be one that we fully control. Like, do we even get to choose? So we've been reconciled, which is hilarious. Yeah, I don't know if we get to choose. Oh no, it's just us. So our papal standing is quite high. <laughs> and we've got our first Holy Roman Empire Pope, as there are no Catholic factions left in the game. So we all need to continually recruit priests. Well, I guess that could stop it, but we can basically call crusades whenever we want now. As Pope Nicolaus, 61, he's got divine connection, he's the purger of heresy. And, oh, we've got a new emperor as well. Emperor Conrad has risen to the throne. Okay, cool. Alright, let's negotiate with the Ruskies. I would like to give them Helsinki, ideally. So, an alliance for map... Not interested. How about I give you, say, Helsinki? What do you say? Oh, well, they really don't like me. Um, for all this, Alliance, Military Axis, Map. That's a lot of money, though. Just rejected, seriously? And I'll give you Helsinki, because if I can get an alliance with the Russians, that would be good. We'll offer that. <sighs> it's a lot of money. But it will be worth it to get us off their backs. And they're probably going to attack Helsinki anyway. I don't really care about the settlement. But our first major alliance between the Holy Roman Empire and the Russians. Hopefully, that will thwart off some attacks. Alright, back down in Constantinople, we've got some princesses here as well, which is Emperor Conrad's. Prince Dieter has come of age. He looks fantastic, but the Emperor has some daughters, so... How do we want to deal with this? I guess we'll just try and marry them. Who's this? Fed Frederick? He looks okay. And Sigismund the Wrathful. So, we'll marry those two off. I think they were the best I could find, like, candidates-wise. So, Sigismund's firstborn son, because he's got quite a strong claim, and he married his cousin as well, Leopold. That's fine. 
And we've shortened the branches there <laughs> slightly. Prince Deer to 23. Future Emperor looks pretty good. Okay, so let's negotiate with the Turks. We've got an alliance with the Russians. Hopefully now with the Turks we can do the same. Oh, it's just costing me a lot of coin. 40,000. It's just so much, but we're at a stage where we have like all of Europe in our, in our control. Like we can afford to save up for a couple turns for that. And oh, oh my god, what's this? Oh no, so the Mongols have made their own th way through. Ah! Oh my god, that's a lot of armies. That's a lot of full stacks. Yeah, like I don't know, like holding any further east is a little bit scary. You kind of want factions as buffer zones. Okay, so we're 92 turns into the campaign. Um, we've skipped a little bit ahead. So I've got five armies here in Spain. Um, we're able to get feudal knights. So we've got a bunch of uh, von Saxony and, and Rasp's descendants. So we're basically building up here. Because I don't think there's a point of swinging them east just yet. There's even a Mandorf here as well. Uh, and Gunther von Saxony. We're getting ready for these armies to eventually head to the New World. So we've got the east, the Western Theatre and the Eastern. Uh, here is basically um, our other settlements as well. Because we've got so many, it's gotten to the point where I can't manage these individually. So I don't tend to use the auto manager um, too much, but it's actually really quite helpful when you've got such a large faction like this at the moment. Okay, so uh, we've nearly built up a solid and secure uh, fort perimeter, but if we've already seen five Mongol full stacks, it could get to quite a considerable um, amount more. Emperor Conrad's here on the eastern front, so we got, I don't know, how many here? Four, eight, and the Mongols can have anywhere between five to ten, I believe, so we want to try and buffer up those forts as well. I think that's the best play, making a fort wall in east Turkey on the former Greek provinces in Constantinople. We kind of want to do the same thing here in Halic and Vilnius, make a front line. We essentially separate Western Europe um, between us, a united Catholic front, and then the Russians and the Turks, which we both have alliances with. The Byzantines are still in the game. They're at war with the Mongols, but there's only a couple more factions, so turn times go on through. We're also getting some docklands here in Constantinople. It's still a little bit of time before we can sail to the New World, but we're basically just trying to lock down our position now and essentially put all of our money into military to start dealing with the hordes of the Mongols and eventual Tumorids as well, hopefully. No, oh, they're besieging Anda. Now, the AI faction does have a player bias, but it's just look at these. There's so many armies to deal with. And they've actually lost it as well. I trying to hold the Levant um, is not the best defendable position either. Like, I think, especially if you play on hard or very hard, defending against the Mongols and, and Tumorids is so, so hard. You really got a fort wall off like this. All right, we've got more generals going eastward as well. Because uh, I, I don't think I'm going to need um, those armies eastward just yet. Uh, also, crusades-wise, um, I think I should call a crusade because we haven't gone on one. Um, just in case the Pope actually calls one, which would be annoying. So we want to try and get the troops earlier. So I'm going to call a crusade on Timbuktu. <laughs> and the Holy Bible may preach peace. We'll head south, because we've also got some armies here that we don't want them to be wasting too much. But we're going to be able to get a bunch of crusading forces as well. We want to get them a little bit battle-hardened and proficient in fighting. Because eventually, these armies will descend into the new world. Which, I believe we have to wait until at least turn 140, between 160. Because there's an event, but you also need um, a huge city, and we need to build caravels uh, as well. So even with the movement bonus, we can push further south. We actually can see where Timbuktu is, because I, I can't remember exactly where it is. Who knows? Where is Timbuktu? Nobody knows. <laughs> but um, yeah, we're going to be able to get more territories um, in Africa, which is sweet. We'll send Wenzel Mandorf. Uh, 
Okay, let's try and get some more mercenaries here as well, even pilgrims. We can use them later on in the crusade against the Aztecs. But what, there's only how many factions in the game now? From the start, Holy Roman Empire, Russia, Turks, Byzantines, Egyptians. Hardly any. Okay. Well, um, I think we're pretty secure on the border here now. We'll send Emperor Conrad um, to Rhodes, but I think we might make a play for the Holy Land. Although we've called a crusade on Timbuktu, I think we might try and take Jerusalem, Cairo. I don't know if I want Antioch and, and Syria and essentially where the Byzantines are, but I think we need to take Jerusalem. We need to take the Holy Land. It's culturally significant to us, but we don't want to extend too far that we have to fight with the Mongols, really. We don't want to weaken ourselves. If we can allow them to annoy and harass and destroy Russians and Turks and stuff, um, their cities, maybe even the Byzantines as well, um, that would be ideal. But we've still got a pretty decent presence here in Spain, just in case we have any rebellions uh, in Central Europe as well. We can swing military forces as well. I'm also building up a strong navy to eventually sail on over. With the fleet. Time of the machine made. We're 101 turns now. Oh, we've been a trade by the Ruskies. Would you believe it? That's annoying. Okay, luckily I've got an army here and here. Oh, okay. I gave them like 40,000 as well, so we've actually funded them. Slightly. Uh, I basically just... I didn't have... I have no ambitions going into Russia or... Turkey, to be honest, so we might as well just like deal with anything that comes at us. That's annoying that they've gone and done that. Okay, we're going on crusade. The ships have arrived at Alexandria, and we're going to declare war upon the Egyptians. The Mongols and Tumorids aren't going to spawn down in Egypt, so we'll be fine to hold and conquer that. The thing is, they're going to head to Constantinople. Like, that's the waypoint. I don't think I've ever seen the Mongols in this game go through Africa, like uh, North Egypt, ever. Like, the Mongols either go through Russia and then arrive in, like, Poland, Hungary, or they go through Ankara as well. But I think, the thing is with Medieval 2 on the harder difficulties, if you take Russian territory or you sort of hold the eastern part of the map, unless you throw all your investment over there, um... You can, like, nearly throw the late game because it's so hard to defend against. All right, back down in Timbuktu. We're nearly here. Fritz von Kessel, son of the famed von Kessel. We've got a von Saxony and a Mandorf here as well. I love that their sons are going on crusade. The former conquerors with the most advanced faction. And, oh my God, there's so many people coming of age. <laughs> Our family tree has exploded. Uh, we started off with, like, hardly any, but look at this. Now it's going a bit madness. Our uh, Venice is still the capital of the empire. And that's where most of the generals are spawning now. Now, thankfully, there hasn't been really any opposition in Alexandra, as Alexandria. There's Emperor Conrad with, oh my god, seven, th nearly 8,000 men of the Holy Roman Empire are going to sack and siege Alexandria. We can swing around to Cairo as well. And fulfill the failed previous crusades and same with Egypt as well very much the same boat as the Turks and Russians is if we can take Alexandria Cairo Jerusalem I don't really have any ambition of holding uh, Jordanian or really Arabian territory all right uh, I guess we swing you to Cairo as well. But we've just got so many armies now. Most of these fights are going to be um, auto resolves because we're going to win it. Good. Uh, Constantinople isn't happy. For whatever reason. If I move Sigismund in, does it change it? Uh, slightly. I know it's quite a large city. All right. Also with Nicaea and Constantinople, we're actually able to ferry troops a lot quicker and resupply the forts. But we're looking good at the moment. We're looking very, very good. Even with that war with the Russians.
And a bit of a desertion there. Because of the crusade. Yeah, sometimes it takes a while to get to your target. Alright, we're looking good. Let's take Timbuktu. <laughs> We've got up some siege equipment. We've also got some Sudanese mercenaries as well. Okay, nothing too crazy there. But... Not the hardest crusade, but we're going to get all the rewards and benefits for it. We're going to be able to make him a crusader. All right, Cairo. Let's have a look at what we're working with. Um, we might play this one, you know. Mm. 6,000. Will we get a better battle against the Egyptians? I don't know. Look, you know what? We'll fight this one. As it's always good to have the siege of Cairo. I want to have the siege of Jerusalem as well. Just depends if they're going to defend their homeland because they didn't seem to have the largest garrison in Alexandria. We've got a better odds here in uh, Cairo, but let's take our first settlement, sieging manually for our first crusade, the real crusade. <laughs> Alright, short and sweet, just how I like it. <laughs> Not a long protracted speech. So, Dieter is probably going to be the next emperor as well, which is awesome. Four emperors we've had in this series. I'm also just trying to power through the turns here now, so we can go on into the new world. But mana takes a long time to build up in medieval too. <laughs> Thankfully we did so well, but it's like we're only just like now. 60 so it's basically like you play with like trash tier units until about turn 50. Um turn 50 to about 100 you can get like proper battle hardened units. We still haven't hit gunpowder. I don't even know if we will. We would imagine we would probably no, we will hit some level of Gunpowder units as we push into the new world. I do plan to take a fair few settlements over there. We've got some Teutonic Knights as well. Recruited from Frankfurt and our Germanic territories. We've also got some Halberds here as well. Didn't f too often fight with those. Well, unfortunately, the Egyptian defenders have done amazingly well here. I'm destroying one of my battering rams. They're going for the second. Thankfully, we brought up enough ladders. Really can't recommend ladders enough, basically, because siege towers, although they look cooler, they're bulky and are really susceptible of catching a light and even destroying units. Although you do lose more casualties moving on up, um, I feel like there's a higher chance <laughs> that you'll lose more because the arrow towers in this game oh, just get engulfed so much. Like, look at this. They've actually got some really quite strong and astute arrow towers there. They've got, like, ballista attached to them. And they've destroyed two of my battering rams. So we're actually going to have to rely on our Germanic boys, our Holy Roman Empire units, to march on up and take the city. And then, once we've established... Alexandria and Cairo as a base of operations. A FOB, a forward operating base. We're going to be able to push and continue on into the Levant. And yeah, we're looking good. The Byzantines as well, which is super interesting, what we can see. So we had a war against them, if you guys remember. We took Nicaea, we took Constantinople. We might have even taken, what, Pergamon? Technically, roughly that area. That ancient Greek Hellenic coastal territory. But then we peaced out with them. <laughs> they fled to Cyprus. And they've actually managed to get a bit of a build-up and a beachhead in Antioch, which is super interesting. It's because we were just distracted with so many Catholic factions. I wouldn't have taken Nicaea if it wasn't too close. But 
we're still yet to deal with the Mongols. We're in a really good position. As we've got a fort, strong fort wall. In defense. I can't recommend fort walls enough. Especially with just the amount of horde, <laughs> horde armies. Like, it is very, very tough to deal with Mongols on the open field. And also we're going to be able to use them and repurpose them when the Tomb Rids come. Because that's, that's, that's the thing, you want to unite Europe under one banner so you can defend against the crazy invaders. I can't even remember where the Tomb Rids spawn to be exact. I think they spawn in the same spot. Because it takes so long to get there, I kind of forget. <laughs> it's been a while since I've gotten to the stage in a campaign where the Tomb Raiders have rocked up. Because the way I like to play Medieval 2 is try and take as much territory as you can. Um, I did read a fair few comments that are like, oh, you've blitzed the campaign, you've been blitzkrieging. Yeah, I don't know. I think that's... I, I think... When you Blitzkrieg in Medieval 2, you get rewarded for it way more than any other Total War, probably. So, it can seem like that. It also depends on the faction. Like, the Holy Roman Empire is the faction... Um, Our men are winning the ...that the Blitzkrieg is, like, insane for. And victory is ours. Coincidentally works well, because they're German. <laughs> I guess. But you could... Li I think we won the long victory campaign within 40. But if you're playing as... I don't know, England... Russia, Milan, and uh, no, probably what would be a, Spain would be a better like. I think, yeah, England, let's say Russia or Spain probably takes you a little bit longer to hit those forty regions. It's just because of that cluster and um, density of cities in and around France and the Holy Roman Empire, because you can like gobble them up quite quickly. Like what? There's only uh, London. Wales, let's say York, and then the two Scottish territories, and then Ireland. So there's only like f seven in seven settlements in the British Isles, while in the same area in France, there's like 12. There's like a lot more. So you just cover a lot of short distances, and there's the density of settlements. But the Crusaders have flung on in. Brave Knights of the Teutonic Order are carving up. The Saracens are carving a cake. And Cairo will be taken for the first time. There was a crusade called on Cairo early on in this series by the AI, but it wasn't successful. Yeah, in hindsight, I probably should have called it on Cairo. But this is like an unofficial crusade, who cares? I was worried it was going to get called because... You don't actually get to choose, which is insane, even though you've got the Pope and the Papal See. They can get called after a certain amount of times, I know that for a fact. That's what I was fearful of. But we're surely and slowly making our way on in against the Mamluk Archers. Oh! Oh, gotta watch out for that. That is a really strong position there. Got some Egyptian catapults rinsing us. Oh my god. <laughs> They're doing really well. They're actually holding us here. Just sending it to a little bit of grind at the moment. We're taking the walls, just pushing it up. Yeah. This is why I just prefer field battles, man. Like, everything up until this was fun in the siege, I think. Like, trying to push past this grind and blob. Just boring. <laughs> I've asked this question before, but I feel free to let me. I feel. I, I feel. I'm gonna say it again, but feel free in the comments to let me know. Land battles or sieges? What do you guys prefer? Like, if I had to say a percentage, I would say 75% of the time I prefer a land battle than a siege. Like, there's some epic sieges you can do, but. Most of the time, I feel like the settlement needs to have, like, some significance, you know what I mean? Right, okay, so we've been actually trashed here. 
<laughs> those catapults, and they've actually held us really well. So we have to send more men up for the meat grinder. Now with some proper dismounted swordsmen, they might be able to do a little bit better. Uh, I've got some generals here, which I don't want to get killed, so... I'm going to withdraw the generals. We only need one. We're simply just not going to need them. I'm going to have to move my crossbows up. Maybe they're going to have a better time at targeting and destroying those catapults. We've got a severe lack of cavalry, so there's no point of flanking around trying to destroy them. To be fair, they've actually inflicted a crazy amount of damage. I've kind of thrown a little bit here. I would have thought three full stacks, Teutonic Knights, they should be able to break through some leather-bound, strapped-up Mamluks on horseback. I'm surprised how well they held. Maybe with artillery support is probably the main thing. Right, let's try and diversify some of these shots up with the crossbowmen. We will take Cairo here today. We've lost 16%, which is uh, doesn't sound that much, but it will be a lot more. Because we've technically got three full stacks approaching. I'm surprised how well they're actually using their catapults effectively. They're nearly using it like a human player. Sucking us all in and then funneling, the, funneling us here. Oh my god, they're actually shredding me. <laughs> oh no. There we go. Now we're engaging them. Just like push on through. Oh my god. Oh my god, we're actually losing. Ah. This is call a rally. Get in here, general. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh wow. This battle progresses well for the Empire. All right. Stay strong. They've rallied, but we need to go again. They are incredibly terrified and frightened from those catapults. My god. So we did get a battle here today in the end. As I thought. Did take a little while. We just had to finish off the remnants of those Catholic kingdoms. So, Christendom has fallen, and the invasion of the Holy Land, the Levant, has Our just begun. Like this. Cool. Is ours. Yeah, we could maybe against, go against the Byzantines. I don't know, let me know in the comments. But I want to try and keep some factions alive as buffer zones. But like, for example, if we moved into that Turkish territory, unless we threw every single army over there, which we've probably got... Let's, let's have a think about it. So we've probably got 15, between 20 stacks, potentially. I don't even know if those would stand against, like, 10 Mongols. Like, it's, it's... It'd be tough. You'd have to get everyone over there. I think at the moment we've got it to, like, a perfect stalemate. But also, then we're foregoing the invasion of the Americas, which I want to do at some point. I don't know. Maybe I'm more fearful and more cautious than really what I should be. We lost a 1,000 there, which is quite crap. Go! Bid the soldiers shoot! Okay, so Cairo will fall. Perfect. And there's even some armies nearby as well. 104 turns in. Well, um, I've played for about an hour here today. So I've got to end the video here, unfortunately. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Uh, we did get a battle. But um, I, I do understand that it might be a little bit different this episode because we had to do so much micromanaging stuff just taking certain ones like we had three battles like three clutch battles in the last episode that we had to deal with and then we basically just had to deal with the remnants of uh, the Catholic Empire hopefully we can have some more battles in the next uh, episode as we're still dealing with the Egyptians um, yeah well we're still at war with the Russians now which is annoying we might have to deal with the Mongols uh, the Tomb Raids are still a little bit far away from rocking up, and then we have to sail into the Americas, which is 100% what I want to do. So stay tuned for episode 11, coming out soon. Unfortunately, it's time to end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Check out my social media links in the description below if you want to stay connected with me. I also want to say thank you to this month's patrons and channel members, Victor K, Sebastian C, Jordan K, Caesar L, Brian S, Tao, Lion B, Kyle P, Tom C, and White P. My name has been Simsy. Much love from Australia. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>